Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, come on in and we'll give everybody a few minutes to join us here before we get started. Again, welcome everybody. And we're letting everybody kind of get into the room here and we'll start shortly. Again, good afternoon. And let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll let people join here as they, as they come into the webinar. Uh, once again, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, a Hub Talk series that is hosted today by DIR, um, the Hub Program, and also the Statewide Hub Program. And before we get started, we wanted to do a couple of housekeeping items for you today. And uh, first of all, we want to do a quick hand raise, and you'll see the little hand raise in the uh, control function of your uh, screen. If you can hear us pretty clear today, would you please just raise your hand so we can do a sound check? And Desiree, I'm assuming we're doing okay. I can't. Looks I can't great. See. Yes. Okay, great. So a couple of housekeeping items. Um, <clears throat> we want to remind you that you can change your audio by switching between the computer, computer audio and the phone call. Um, all attendees are muted today uh, because we've got a larger group. Uh, we invite you to please put your questions and answers in the Q&A panel. Uh, please don't use the chat for questions because sometimes questions can get lost in the chat. So please use the Q&A box for your questions during the webinar today. And with that, we once again appreciate you joining us today. And I will turn it over to Maya Ingram from the Statewide CPA Hub Program. Thank you, Tom. Welcome everyone to Hub Talk. We are going to go ahead and get started. I believe, um, Desiree, if you're telling me I'm good to start, let's go ahead and get started. So today we're gonna to go over the statewide hub program overview. We'll talk about our hub certification system and we'll talk about the hub resources that are available for uh, businesses to use in business development. DIR will come in and talk about their hub overview and resources. And today we have as our guest speakers, Minority Business Development Agency, the COVID-19 Business Resource Center, and the U University of Texas Rio Grande Valley Entrepreneurship and Commercialization Center. And then after we get through with our presentations, we'll go on to questions and answers. So as Tom said, please uh, write, write your questions in the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. The Statewide Hub Program. The Texas Government Code, Section 2161, establishes the hub program throughout the state within state agencies and universities and authorizes the comptroller public accounts to administer that program. The hub program is a component of the statewide procurement division at the comptroller's office. And the CPA statewide hub program establishes the rules to administer the agency and university programs. Those rules are listed in the Texas Administrative Code, Title 34, Chapter 20, Subchapter D, Division 1, Sections 20.281 and through 298. We refer to those rules in 34, Pac 20. The 2009 disparity study, or the last disparity study was completed in 2009 and determined that there were still disparate groups in the state's procurement process. Therefore, we still have a historically underutilized business program. That disparity study identified the disadvantaged groups and established the statewide hub program procurement goals. Next slide, please. So this is an analogy that I like to use to describe um, the statewide hub programs and how the agencies and the universities all 
play together. So if you see the large red umbrella there, consider that to be a huge golf umbrella. So above that is the Comptroller Public Accounts, the statewide procurement division. And within that statewide procurement division is the statewide historically underutilized business program. We administer the program and we establish the rules. So we're the big red umbrella. Under our big red umbrella are all these smaller blue umbrellas that are all considered hub programs. The statewide hub program is the red one and the agency and university hub programs are the blue ones. The statewide hub program does certification of small businesses. We do have compliance of those small business certifications to be sure that everybody is who they say they are and they meet all uh, certification requirements. We do all of the compiling of reporting of the statewide expenditures from all the agencies and universities. They submit their annual expenditure data to us and we compile an annual and semi-annual hub expenditure report. And we post those on our website. We'll go through those in a little bit. The statewide hub program is also responsible for providing education and outreach to the hubs, the agency hub programs, and the university hub programs. Next slide, please. Rule 281 in 34 TAC 20 is the policy and purpose. So this rule identifies the policy and of the, comptrol the comptroller's office policy for the program. And we encourage the use of hubs in state procurement process through a race, ethnic and gender neutral means. What that means is all those small businesses that meet our certification requirements are certified as hubs. In the state procurement process, those hubs are given a good faith effort opportunity to participate in the competitive process of those procurements. The, the purpose of the hub program is to promote, promote full and equal business opportunities for all businesses, hub and non-hub. But in our case, we focus on the hubs. These rules are described, these rules describe the minimum steps and requirements needed within the procurement process. Next slide. So as I said before, the disparity study evaluated all of the, the states, the statewide procurement uh, processes and determined where there were uh, disparate groups within the different procurement areas. And based on that the findings of that disparity study, these percentages uh, will identify the percent, the hub goal within the different purchasing categories. So in heavy construction, those are infrastructure projects. They're not regular building. It is heavy construction. So these are the highway, um, the water, um, what do you call those? Water, um, water infrastructure projects. Uh, all those big infrastructure related type projects are 11.2%. That's what our goal to include hubs in those types of projects. Building construction. This is new construction and maintenance projects for buildings that the state owns. These are 21.1% gold. 32.9% is the goal for special trade. And those are special trade within concession park. 23.7 is professional services. So special training or professional degrees, architectural engineer and, and uh, professional degrees of those sorts. 26.0 is for other services. These are generally services such as consultants, trainers, uh, and other types of documentation. 21.1 is the goal for commodities. These are general goods, pencils, papers, and those kinds of things. Next slide, please. Certification. We certify the small businesses in the state of Texas. And with that certification, they receive a free hub directory listing. Certification includes the disparate groups of Asian American, Black American, Hispanic American, Native American, American woman, and service disabled veterans with at least a 20% service disability. 
That service disability has to be documented with the two from the two different sections here, but they are federal government um, uh, certifications that they receive in the service disability. Next slide, please. Qualifications. So a business must be 51% owned by a minority woman or service disabled veteran with at least 20% disability. The businesses must be primarily based in Texas. If a business has branch offices, the main office must be re uh, located in Texas for us to consider that hub certification. Owners must be a US citizen, except for the qualified service disabled veteran category. Owners must be residents of Texas at least one year. Owners must maintain active participation in control operations and management entities. What that means is the owners have to make the day-to-day -day decisions of the business. They are the ones that need to make, we need to make sure that they make those contract decisions and the best decisions for the success of that business. The small business must also meet, the hub businesses must also meet the small business administration size standards. We use those size standards to be sure that the small business meets its qualifications. Next slide, please. Once a business is hub certified, they receive, or the application process is free. It is a four year certification and they will receive a free hub directory listing in the category within the centralized master bidders list directly. We ask that every hub business listed in the business directory include a description of their National Institute of Government Purchasing codes. The NIGP codes are the codes that the state of Texas purchasers use to identify their products and services. Recertification. Once those four years are completed, four months before the deadline or the expiration date of that certification, the hub businesses will receive uh, notices four months prior to the certification expiration. And assistance from the statewide hub program is always free. Next slide. I know this is a little hard to see, but we'll get into it. There's some more slides that'll show you this webpage as we get later. So what you see there is the hub page, the hub page, uh, a listing of the hub page, and that's what it looks like, even though it's hard to see. So the new online certification system is operating. And um, one of those paragraphs where the red line is on the hub page will provide you a link for certification that takes you directly to that hub certification system. Vendors will complete an application and upload supporting documents. Supporting documents would be tax documents that prove the primary business is located in Texas. It'll show the name of the owner applicant uh, and it'll provide us the information we need to, set, to be sure that they meet the size standards requirements for that business. So those types of supporting documents, they may be birth certificates, they may be documentation where the business is located, maybe um, uh, that if it's a lease, it'll be a lease document and those kinds of things. Um, once a hub vendor is certified, they're approved in the system and they're listed in the hub directory on the centralized master bidders list. The vendors can go into their record on the hub certification system and print their new cert uh, certifications, their certificates, sorry. The statewide hub program will randomly choose hub vendors for compliance reviews. And we will complete those on the new online system. We also provide on-sites. We currently are not traveling at the, at the moment due to the pandemic. We have not started our traveling, but once we do, uh, I have a team of analysts that will uh, randomly choose vendors, or if a vendor is flagged because of whatever question we might have, then we will send an anal analyst to the actual business site to do an on-site compliance review. Next slide. 
So you see uh, on this right side, you'll see the comptroller's purchasing vendor hub. This link right here on the left-hand side will take you to the statewide hub page. Within that page, you will have a directory for the new system for hub certification. We refer to that as the Texas Statewide Hub System, the TSHS. Current hub certified vendors have their records included in the system. So once the business is registered, the owner may go into their records to keep up with their NIGP codes or their email address or their whatever information they have to keep up with. So we do everything through a system now. That system helps us maintain uh, our audit requirements and maintain that we are completed everything within the time that's required. Profiles are listed with NIGP codes. Vendors can get into the system to update their information and the hub directory is listed with the NIGP codes and contact information on the centralized master bidders list website. Certification is completely online. And as I said before, it is free. Next slide. This is what our certification main page will look like. So once you click on the link off the hub page, this is where you go. It takes you to the certification system and the login is for either people who are working statewide hub, uh, or it could be a vendor that already has a record, then they will have a login. And when vendors are trying to go in to create a new hub certification application, or if they're trying to recertify, they will click on the hub certification link. Let's go to the next slide. I think I have more links there. Yes. So these are the different options once you get into the hub page. The hub certification, you can apply or renew the certificate. You can learn about the statewide hub program by clicking that second box on the left-hand side. You can go in to view the recorded trainings that are in the system. So there's a whole list of trainings. They are ongoing. Some are recorded and some are not. Some are live. So that's the calendar. You can go into the information for vendors. So about the system will provide you with a whole lot of information and documents and just kind of the requirements and all and contact information for, for the statewide hub program. The outreach is only for statewide hub program at this point. We don't, all of our outreach events are posted on the comptroller's page. And then the last box is account access. So if you already have a record, certified record, then you can go into the account lookup. You can find your, your account there. If you forgot a password, then you would hit that password. So let's go to the next slide, please. The statewide hub program about, oh, for the longest time up until about uh, April uh, of this past year, all of our certification process was manual. So vendors would submit all of their paper documents, all of their supporting documents to our office and it would all be manually reviewed. So it was a very tedious and long process. Our new system is now online. So vendors can complete their application and upload all of their supporting documents into their application record directly into the system. Once the application is complete, and let me, let me explain what complete means for us. Complete for us means that every supporting document with any, every section of the application that requires a supporting document, once all of the supporting documents are included, then, then the application is complete. And then the statewide hub program will receive a notice through the system that says the application record is complete and we can now review it. Certification applications will be reviewed and approved by my certification team and our analyst team. Certified vendors can enter their profile and print hub certificates directly through the system. And when I say they can submit their profile, that's an NIGP profile. Letters and templates are already included in the system. So when our analysts and our auditors are trying to communicate with vendors, they do so through emails and our templates are in. So 
the same information is being sent and then the, the portion where um, the identification of documents is needed, then that's the part that's been entered into those template letters. So we try and make sure that we're, we're kind of keeping the same message as we go through the process. Our compliance and aud our audit team will also do desk audits. So because we are not traveling doing on-site audits, currently we review the files online through the records and do our audits online. So we do desk audits and we do on-site audits. Our audit sites, our audit on-site audits will begin as soon as our travel um, resumes. Certification for a statewide hub is a four-year certification. Let's go to the next slide. So this, we're going to go over some of the CPA uh, hub resources that are available and this is a great picture because it's all about blue bonnets, but our office, our IT team will change the background of the comptroller's main page often. So this page right here was probably taken during the blue bonnet season and that's when we had it there. So uh, if you see the red arrow at the top and the circle, you really can't see what that word is, but it says purchasing. So on the left side, you'll see comptroller.texas.gov. That's the main website for the comptroller's office. If you kind of go over toward the middle of that, you'll see uh, there's a home page, there's a page, there's a link for taxes, there's transparency, there's, um, I don't know what that other one is, and then there's purchasing and then processing and about. The one that's important to us right now is going to be purchasing. Let's go to the next slide. So if you put your cursor over purchasing, don't click on it, hover over purchasing and a drop down is gonna come back, come out and this is what you're going to see. If you can see up at the top, the white boxes on purchasing. These red arrows are to some of the resources that we're gonna talk about here. And these are important for a lot of different reasons and we'll go into the uh, importance of each one of those. So, in the, on the left arrow facing down under vendor resources is the historically underutilized business page. This page gives you the general information for anything from the government code to the TAC 34, TAC 20. Uh, it'll tell you about our certification process. It'll take you to uh, some business resources. And let's go to the next page. I think I'm taking you on to the hub page from here. No, I didn't. Okay. So, the hub page will give you all of these links. It'll take you to the centralized master bidders list. It'll take you to the NIGC code book. It'll take you to the electronic state business daily. All of these information, all of these links are hub resources that are available. The first is the centralized master bidders list. Uh, let's go back one, please. The centralized master bidders list is considered the state's official vendor list. However, when I say it's the state official vendor list, it's a vendor list where any business who wants to do business with the state of Texas can register their business for a $70 annual fee and they can be listed in the CMBL directory. Uh, this is where purchasers will go when they're looking for vendors to notify of their procurement needs. This is also the system that will have a link to the hub directory list. So the centralized master bidders is the general list that's required by law for purchasers to use when they need to provide notifications to uh, small businesses about procurements. The hub page, this is our free small business certification. On the hub page, we have the coordinator list, which we'll get to in a little bit. And then we also talked about with the big umbrella, uh, we do hub reports. So we compile all the expenditures from the agencies and university on a semi-annual and annual basis. And then we prepare a huge semi-annual report and annual report and we post it on the hub page. So that's there. The NIGP Commodity Code Book, like I said, it's the National Institute of Government Purchasing Codes. This is what the state of Texas purchasers use to identify their purchasing needs. So when they're getting ready to prepare solicitation and they're posting it on the electronic state business daily, they use those NIGP codes to identify that solicitation. Those codes are used to find the vendors on the CMBL, the hub directory, 
They send notifications of that procurement. And they also post solicitations over $25,000 on what we call the ESBD, the electronic, electronic state business. That's, I'm sorry, there's a typo there. It's the electronic state business daily. Oh, that's Billy. So anyway, the ESBD, we'll go through that in a minute. And that's a search engine that's available for you to find all of these uh, procurement opportunities that are available. So we find them through the NIGP. We can find them through the agency or university that's posting. Agencies are required to post solicitations over $25,000. Universities are not. However, the majority of them still use the electronic state business daily. Let's go to the next slide. So if we go to the centralized master bidders list, so if you remember that first slide where we had the blue bonnets and we talked about purchasing up at the top and uh, under those resources, uh, vendor resources were historically underutilized business. Well, right above the hub page is the, the link to the centralized master bidders list. And this is what it looks like. So you'll see, on the first arrow to the left, the active CMBL vendors. This will take you to a list that'll help you find vendors that are active. The comptroller's account CPA bid notification. So again, purchasers use the CMBL to notify vendors of procurement opportunities. On the right-hand side under related links, it says search for CMBL hub vendors. And we'll go there in just a minute. Under CMBL, you'll also find that second link is the profile updates. So for vendors who are on the CMBL or hub directory and want to update their profiles, that's where they will go, enter their password into their record, get into their record, and they can uh, update those NIGP codes and all their contact information. Let's go to the next slide. So this is what the CMBL search page will look like. If you look at the top, the first arrow on the left, it says search for, you have CMBL only, and that is for vendors hub and non-hub that have paid the $70 annual fee and are listed on the CMBL. The CMBL only is what purchasers are required to search for. However, if you look at that second uh, little dot that's not highlighted, that says hub only. So this is the hub directory listing. This is the official listing of small business vendors that are hub certified. This is the state's list. Purchasers can use the CMBL only, but they can also go look at the hub directory list. And we only touched on it a little bit at the beginning, but purchasing requirements mean that uh, purchasers have to give hub vendors an equal opportunity, a good faith effort to include them in the solicitation um, opportunities. So purchasers will also look on the hub directories, but hub coordinators in their communications with the purchasing department will go and supplement that notification list through their own hub directory list. So it could be a list of vendors they, they have met in different events and they keep a, a communication list or they go to the hub directory list and do a search for any vendor that can provide those products or services based on the NIGPs of that solicitation code. The hubs on CMBL. If, some, if a purchaser is looking for vendors on CMBL, but wants to make sure that they're including the proper amount of hubs, then they could do a search for hubs on the CMBL. So again, it's important for vendors to list themselves on the centralized master bidders list. If they have a sub hub certification, we also recommend that they, they join the centralized master bidders list so that they don't have to go look for the opportunities, the opportunities come looking for them. And the last link that's there are all vendors. So if anyone is looking for a search, you can find vendors that are expired. Uh, they may no longer be hub, but they're still there. So if you're looking for something like that or vendors like that that you want to include, make it a bigger search, then that's where they would go. When, whatever type of search you're doing, it'll ask for a vendor ID number. Uh, it could ask for a vendor number and it could generally, we use the vendor names. 
So if we use the vendor name, we generally, the little drop down at the next arrow, uh, next box, um, it has two or three different choices and it can be an exact name starts with or contains. I always use contains because that captures most of them there. And then on the next box with the arrow on the right hand side, that's where you, we would type in a name of a vendor. But if a purchaser is on, doesn't know the names and is only looking for a list of vendors that can provide a certain commodity code, let's just say class and item codes, class NIGP codes use five codes. So a purchaser is using one, two, three for the class code and four and five for the item code. They must use those five codes. The highway district allows them to search for those class and item codes by a region within Texas. But if it doesn't have a highway code, then it will search through the whole state unless it's asking for a county in the search. So there's more to the search, but I've just kind of touched on that. So let's go to the next slide. How does HUB report assist state agencies? Okay, this is the fun part. So small businesses, they wanna do some business development. How do they determine which agencies or universities are best for them to contact? Well, the HUB reports can assist them. HUB reports are listed on this page within the HUB page. For 2021, we only have the semi-annual posted. Our annual reporting begins September 1, and our HUB report will be completed by October, no, um, October 5th, no, November 15th. So the new report will be posted in November. We'll have two or three different years. I think right now we have about four or five years just because we haven't gone in and completed the whole revision of the HUB page, but you have two or three years past that should be there so you can compare with uh, finding out which agencies are spending what. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, we talked about hub goals. We talked about these. I'm gonna go back for just a second. Can we go back to the other slide, please? Okay, so when we're talking about these hub reports and I'm saying you, there's business development search opportunities here. If you open up one of these uh, hub director, hub reports, It'll give you a cover letter. It'll give you an analysis, which is a four or five page that kind of breaks down how the hubs are participating in the um, annual procurement processes. Um, it gives you a breakdown by categories of certification by dollars, total dollars that are spent with hubs and non-hubs. And it'll also list the subcontracting opportunities. But within, it's a Roman numeral page that'll come up there. And within the bottom of that Roman numeral page, you will get methodologies and procurement categories. So clicking on that procurement category uh, document allows you to convert the NIGP codes to the possible purchasing codes where purchasers have to report, where Hub has to report those uh, expenditures. Um, it's something that we can do at another time because it's a longer process, but using that uh, procurement methodology and those purchasing categories allows you to go to the report and identify which agency is spending under each of those categories. So let's go to the next slide, please. The purchasing categories that I'm talking about on the methodology goes back to the hub goals. So it allows us to report on whether agencies are meeting their goals by allowing them to submit their expenditures through those purchasing categories that match each one of these goals. So when you go look at that report, you can find it's a four code, purchasing categories are four code, and you can search in the detailed report of that agency. You can search in the, the detailed report of that agency where they're spending and, and how they're spending. Uh, and that allows you to determine if that agency is purchasing the products or services that you provide. So it's a longer, it's, it's more than that. And we'll get into that in another time. So if anybody has any questions about that, you can reach out to me or put your questions in the Q and A and we'll go over that as we get to that point. So, this is the hub page and I have some of those related links. These are more resources that are available. 
on the right hand side. The hub events calendar, these are events that are hosted by Statewide Hub. The calendar of events allows uh, outside entities, universities, agencies, small business development centers, um, any kind of um, PTAC, any kind of an office or, or, or entity that's providing assistance or wants to reach out and network to the small businesses and particularly with hubs. Um, let's see, the other one I have highlighted is to modify, there's a link to modify the CMBL profile, which is also the hub directory profile. Uh, there's a link on the related links that takes you to our certification process. So all of our qualifications are listed on the certification process page. Uh, a listing of our memorandums of agreement with other entities who provide certification for us is listed there. Um, the hub and business resources is important link because by clicking on hub and business resources, you find another link for the hub coordinators. So once you've done some business development or you see a procurement opportunity that's available and you want to reach out to that hub coordinator because as a hub certified small business, your liaison to that agency or university is the hub coordinator. So I suggest once you've identified an agency or university that you go and visit with that hub coordinator. Right now it's all virtual. So send them an email, send them a phone call. The business list, the, the hub coordinator list that's there is an Excel sheet that comes up and you can find contact information through that Excel sheet for every agency and university and even local governments and um, counties and cities who follow the state programs, the state hub programs rules. So there's all kinds of really good contact information to kind of begin some of your business development. Um, and then below that is the hub reports and forms, which, is, which we just went over. So there's a link to the hub reports and forms to help you with your business development. Next slide. So we have this, we're gonna review this again. Uh, the centralized master bidders list, remember, it's the state's official vendor list, but it's not a vendor list that the state endorses any vendor that's listed. It's a $70 annual fee. It also includes the hub directory listing, and purchasers use the CMBL to find vendors based on those NIGP categories and provide them email notifications of procurement opportunities. So, Historically underutilized business, the hub program. Uh, we do hub certification for the small qualified businesses. Uh, it also has, we have hub coordinators in agencies and universities who are your liaisons into the hub program specific to those agencies and universities. So those hub coordinators, there's a representative for the agencies and universities um, for every blue umbrella that you find under the statewide hub program. The NIGP Commodity Codebook. It's important because that profile lists the types of products and services that that, that is business can provide. And that's how purchasers are going to find um, the vendors and provide them those opportunities. The Electronic State Business Daily. This is a site that allows purchasers and we see cities, counties, private companies, um, school districts, universities, agencies, anyone can post, post any kind of an opportunity on the electronic state business daily. And it's driven by the NIGP codes. Purchases over $25,000, agency purchasers are required to post their solicitations over $25,000 on the ESBD. Uh, anything below $25,000, those purchasers will search for the vendors and send email notifications. So there's different types of thresholds that require different kinds of uh, procurement requirements. Next slide. So with that, um, I'm going to go on to the Q&A discussions. We're gonna leave that to the end though, but contact information for the statewide hub program an email to statewide hub program at cpa.texas.gov. I have an excellent staff that's available to answer questions. And if you need to reach me, that's another way to reach me. We have an 800 number 
and we have a local Austin number. Okay. So let's go on to the next slide and let's see who's coming up next. Okay, DIR. Tom Hay, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you tell us all about DIR. All right, Maya, thank you all very much. And thanks, Maya. Uh, again, my name is Tom Hay and I've been with DIR for 10 years next week, actually. Wow, that's gone fast. Um, prior to DIR, I was with TRS for a couple of years. So I've been with the state for about 12 years now. And normally Lynn Hotty, our hub director, does this portion for DIR. However, she's unavailable today, but I work directly with Lynn on the hub team and I, I do the outreach and training coordination for DIR, as does Desiree Brown, who is engineering and running our webinar for us today. So for the next few minutes, we're gonna talk through how to do business with DIR. If you go to the next slide, we are kind of a cousin or a sister agency to the comptroller's office in that we do purchasing and procurements as well. However, we handle only information technology procurements and products and services contracts for the state of Texas. And that includes things like our cooperative contracts program, where uh, customers can go purchase hardware, software, and technology services through our vendors who hold cooperative contracts with DIR. Uh, we also have our shared technology services offerings where we negotiate and outsource managed services for customers to utilize for things like data center services, managed security services, uh, the public and private cloud offerings, mainframe services, things like that. We are also in charge of the statewide data program and making sure that that's all intact. Uh, DIR is also responsible for Texas.gov. So if you have been on Texas.gov to renew your car registration, your automobile re registration, uh, that is a product of DIR. Our agency also does a lot of technology planning and policy for the state of Texas as well, doing that long-term strategic plan for the state of Texas and projecting out three years, five years down the road. We also handle communication technology services offerings for the state of Texas, voice and data service, voice, local and long distance services, and also internet and data center plans. Of course, uh, information security is also another big area for DIR and making sure that the state's data is kept safe. So we are a state agency and we were created in 1989 and our basic purpose is to see, serve as the chief information office for the state of Texas. <clears throat> okay, next slide, please. So for you, for you attending today, if you offer um, uh, information technology products and services, uh, this is your avenue to maybe be considered for a DIR contract. So who are our eligible customers? Well, Texas state agencies and institutions of higher education make up about 183 eligible entities, uh, units of local government. That includes anything from city and county governments to school districts, um, municipalities, junior colleges, and special purpose districts. And then other organizations are also eligible to procure IT products and services through our contract offerings. That includes assistance organizations as defined by the comptroller's office, um, ERCOT, LCRA, private schools, and private and independent institutions of higher education also eligible. Uh, volunteer fire departments, uh, public safety entities and hospitals in Texas. And then we also have a large number of public entities located outside of the state of Texas who, through an agreement with DIR, are eligible to procure information technology products and services through our contract offerings. That includes uh, local governments, uh, state agencies in other states, institutions of higher education and local governments in K through 12 school districts. Again, those do require an agreement with DIR uh, to procure through our product offerings. However, eligible entities within the state of Texas do not need an agreement with DIR for our cooperative contract uh, offerings in order to procure through our contracts. And we've also included the uh, eligibility page on the DIR website if you'd like to go out and see what the actual eligibility requirements are for our different offerings, we have included that link. You can go out and view that information. Okay, next slide. So the question is often asked, um, how, do I, how do I get on the DIR? 
How do I sign up for DIR? And uh, for, for starters, to answer that question, there, there is no sign up list or no registration to, to be considered for a DIR contract. There, the information is posted on the DIR website and it is located on the information for vendors link at the top of the DIR website, which by the way, we are getting ready to release a new version of the DIR webpage. So look for that in the next couple of weeks. But once you go to the information for vendors tab, there is a link there on how to become a DIR vendor. And that kind of walks you through the process of being considered as a prime contract holder for a DIR contract, or if you are interested in becoming a reseller or a subcontractor on an existing prime vendors contract. All of that information is located on the DIR website. And that page also includes a link to our current contracting initiatives. And in order to be considered for a DIR contract, all interested vendors must first respond to one of our posted requests for offers uh, that are published on the DIR website, in addition to being published on the ESBD that Maya had talked about, the Electronic State Business Daily, all interested vendors must respond to one of our solicitations first in order to be considered for a DIR contract. So you can see all of those postings on the current contracting initiatives page. Now, if you go to the next slide, Desiree, <clears throat> This is what that page looks like. So you can see what we have in the planning phase. Those are the things out there in the future that we're trying to get put together and we're, we're planning those procurements. Um, and, and you can kind of get an idea of when those may be coming into being. You can also see what we're doing for pre-solicitation notices, or maybe we're doing requests for information, or we're doing some market researching and we're looking for, for comments from interested vendors about general marketplace. Um, sightings and information that you have about the marketplace. If you click on the posting phase, that's where you will actually see what active solicitations that DIR has posted. And that's on, on those in that phase, that's where interested vendors can respond to the RFOs that DIR has posted, as long as your products and services are within the scope of that posted RFO. And then uh, once those postings are done, they then close and we no longer take, uh, take offers from vendors. But you can also see uh, what we currently have that we're evaluating, that we're negotiating, what we've recently awarded, and then what we have fully closed and awarded all contracts. In there. So that information on the DIR webpage actually gives vendors uh, the opportunity to go out and see what we have in the planning phase and what we currently have posted if you're interested in responding to, a, to an RFO uh, where your products and services are fit. Because we typically make multiple vendor awards under our RFOs. For example, uh, we just completed or we're currently completing a cabling services RFO. We posted that out on the DIR website. It was posted on the ESBD and vendors could propose their cabling products and services to us. We've probably, we will probably award somewhere between 25 and 30 contracts for cabling services. So our eligible customers can then go make those purchases through those existing DIR contracts. So this page here on the DIR website kind of walks you through what we've got out there. If you're interested in seeing uh, if your products and services are fit, you can track all these procurements on the DIR website. Okay, next slide. This is kind of what uh, the posting phase looks like. This is a screenshot. This is not, I don't believe this is an actual uh, live shot of what we currently have posted, but this tells you once you click on that posting phase, you can, you can see the name of the request for offer. It is assigned a posting number that takes you to the ESBD documents. You can see a description of that RFO. You can also see the due dates when those bids have to be sent to DIR and make sure that they are uh, um, within that time frame. because once those bids close, you cannot submit uh, an offer to us. And then it also lists the actual contact person. If you have questions that are specific to that request for offer, you do have a contact person to uh, at, as a resource if you need to reach out to somebody. So we invite you to go out to the DIR webpage and take a look at that current contracting initiatives page. Okay, next slide. 
we've listed some resources for you here. Maya has covered a lot of these in her presentation, but if you're interested in HUB certification, um, again, we encourage you also to make sure your company is registered with the centralized master bidder list because that notifies, you know, vendors of potential bid opportunities with the state of Texas. Uh, we've included the link to the ESBD, the State Ele Electronic State Business Bank. If you need a list of hub coordinators, we have uh, included that list that is available on the comptroller site. Questions on hub reporting and then uh, question or events coming up on the calendar. Uh, that link is also included. Next page. And if you have questions about DIR and how to do business with DIR, uh, this is your DIR hub team. Again, Lynn, Lynn Hotty is our director. Uh, Teresa Williamson and Desiree Brown both work uh, directly with Lynn in the hub office. I as well work with Lynn in the hub office and Desiree and Teresa. We've also included the email address to the hub office if you have questions about hub forms or how to become a reseller on a sub or on a prime contract holder's contract, feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, next slide. And with that, I will, I believe, pass it off to either Jose or Jesus. One of one of them will, will jump in here to talk about. Hey, this is Maya. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it right here. Thank you, Tom. And as he said, he gave you all those links that we talked about. They're very important for everybody to keep up with. We are recording this, and I believe we can um, post the um, presentation after we're done. We'll make sure that's posted for everybody to have. So thank you again, Tom. That was awesome. DIR's hub team is a fantastic team to work with, so please reach out to them if you have any questions. Next, we're gonna go to the um, COVID-19 Business Resilience Center. And with that group today, we have Jose Munoz, who's the project manager for the Mexico San Antonio Minority Business Development Agency Export Supplemental Program. Jose, I'm gonna let you take it over. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, nice to have you here. Thank you for, for joining us today at this important uh, webinar. Um, as mentioned, you know, we are part of the COVID-19 Business Resilience Center, which is made up of a four-man team at this point here in San Antonio, headed by Mr. Jesus Gonzalez, and also is Mr. Alberto Flores, Bill Hernandez, and myself uh, working together and making sure that we uh, provide necessary support to MBEs here in San Antonio and uh, South, uh, East, um, uh, South Central San, uh, Texas as well. Next slide, please. You know, the COVID-19 Business Resilience Center is, uh, we're located uh, as part of the Institute of Economic Development at UTSA. It's a project that is fu uh, funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce through the Minority Business Development Agency. Uh, we uh, are part of the Coronavirus Response and, and Relief Award. Our mission is very simple, is to advise and provide at no cost advisory services that may help minority businesses, you know, to recover from the adverse economic effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so basically we're a part of consultants and project managers, making sure that we review on a case by case basis, what the situation is at hand and see if there's anything at our reach or our networks uh, to see if um, we, can, we can help out in, in any, any way. For our clients, our clients are small minority businesses located in rural and economically distressed areas. Um, again, if they want to reach out, you know, we might be looking into, you know, specific uh, instances or cases. If that is something that is not our competency, we'll certainly figure out a way or find a way to direct you to the right, um, the right direction. If if there, by any means we we will not be able to to support you. Next slide, please. The main services provided is, uh, you know, ongoing communication of business opportunities, uh, particularly, you know, in events like, such as this one, like the hub event, access for ongoing advising, you know, how to apply for a Texas hub certification, elaboration of the capability statement, things of that nature, and financial advisory regarding loans, grants, and other financial resources available. 
We do have a very close connection to SBA context and financial networking, as well as we participate, develop, and form you know, webinars similar to this one with the SBDC uh, in, in order to make sure that we start compounding you know, the, the resources to make sure that we help our MBEs that, that have approached us. Next slide. We just similar to this event, we do have another event that we would like to take an opportunity to, to share with you. And uh, as part of the COVID-19 Business Resilience Center is one that we're doing together with the S SBDC. And it's uh, being held on September the 1st, Wednesday, September the 1st, uh, from 3 to 4 p.m. Of course, it's virtual. There is a register link uh, being um, shared there with you um, at no cost. And it's uh, for applying for PPP forgiveness and other funding resources as well. So if you can, please uh, uh, record the information to join us there at September the 1st. We'll be looking forward to, to meeting up with you and, and establishing that communication that's necessary. Next slide. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to UTRGV. Thank you very much. And please feel free to contact us at any time. Have a good day. Thanks, Jose. This is Maya. So Thank you, Maya. To all of our small businesses that are out there, there are great free resources for all of the small businesses to contact, uh, visit with them, establish a relationship, and see what they can do to help you expand your business and get through the rest of this pandemic. So great resources. Thank, thanks, Jose. That was awesome. Oh, thanks. So Next, I'd like to introduce Linda Ufland. I hope I pronounced that right. She's the Director of Entrepreneurship Commercialization and Innovation for the Office of Economic Development at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Linda's charged with providing leadership and oversight to the Entrepreneurship and Commercialization Center, the ECC. She focuses on business incubation, entrepreneurial development, and incubation management consultation across the Rio Grande Valley. So Linda, thank you so much for being here today and I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Maya. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of this fantastic session today. Um, we are partnering with our, you know, our partners at UTSA to bring to you this, this kind of information. I'm here to kind of talk to you a little bit about the services that we're able to provide here in the Rio Grande Valley. I don't know if anybody that's connected is from the Rio Grande Valley, but of course it is open for everybody across the region and across the state of Texas. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So our office or our center is located under the Division of Governmental and Community Relations for the university. As you all know, we used to be two separate institutions here in the you might not know actually, two separate institutions here in the Rio Grande Valley. We were at UT Bronxville, which is located right, right on the corner border. We're all border towns, but a little bit more closer to the border. And the other one was the University of Texas Pan American that was located in Edinburgh, Texas. So um, about five years ago, six years ago, exactly, we were told to consolidate. So we became the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. So our division basically now holds the house for economic development. Next slide. Our center is basically focused on providing assistance to startup companies or anybody, any entrepreneur that wants to start a business and existing businesses that would like to scale or grow. So uh, basically we're a sort of like, like a laboratory for the university to host not only um, student or faculty startup companies, but our work is mostly with community. Uh, it is focused on building a very thriving economy here in the Grand Valley. And with all the changes that are taking place now here, it is imperative that we have a good standing economic region so we can host all these new ventures that are coming into the RGV due to all this scale of businesses that are arriving, such as SpaceX. Next slide. This is our team at the ECC. Um, we are composed of, again, we, we run a business incubator. So our staff runs you know, entrepreneurial development programs. We run um, incubator programs with our startup companies and our companies that would like to grow. And we also have an international program being so close to the border where we focus in the Americas mostly. Next slide. This is our ecosystem down here at UTRGB. We're basically, uh, 
we provide, we're, we're a set of different centers that provide services and assistance to all entrepreneurs, existing and new ones. So our center is just one of all these centers that are around this circle that you see, which is TMAC, the Texas Manufacturing Assistance Center. We have a global soft landing uh, program. We have PTAC. So in reference to this particular project or session, we really focus on our partners at PTEC to provide that assistance to our entrepreneurs or any of our clients that are seeking to work with government. We also have SBDC that's under the university as well, the Veterans Business Outreach, the Data and Information System, and we have another incubator in West Laco, West Laco Texas, that is called the Center for Commercialization and Innovation. All of us together really focus on the um, entrepreneurial ecosystem in the Rio Grande Valley to provide a well-rounded um, series of services to our community. Next slide. And these are sort of the things that we do um, working together. This is the, the type of services that we provide. We do, um, we're actually affiliated with the Kaufman Foundation. So we do a lot of entrepreneurial programs based on that, which is a national organization that is focused on entrepreneurship. Uh, we do trainings, we do um, workshops, we work with, um, if you're looking to, to gain any type of financing, either small business loans all the way to angel investment. Uh, we also specialize in international programs and in bringing soft landings here into the United States that are one to land in the Rio Grande Valley or close to the valley. And of course, we do um, second phase programming with TMAC, which is the Texas Manufacturing Assistance Center. Uh, we do a series of different programs. We have an i program, which is customer discovery, we do um, ideation programs and as well as uh, uh, capital investment programs. Next slide. Uh, in the near future, in about six months, we will be moving to a new facility that is being created here in the Rio Grande Valley, which is being called down here, the biggest entrepreneurship center south of San Antonio. So this facility will really create a hub of entrepreneurship and services to assist our small business community. So the eBridge, which is being called, will be a 36,000 uh, square foot facility that is being constructed in renovation right now in downtown Bronxville, where we will have not just the incubator and the center, our center, but also we will have all the centers that I mentioned uh, present in this building, as well as other resources uh, provided to our community to continue working on their products or services or continue to scale their, their existing um, products. And we work with all sorts of, um, we're a mixed use incubator, so we work with all sources of industries. We do from techno technology, aerospace, as well as food commercialization, and of course, small business development, because we are focused in our region is small business, and we, can, we need to service that, that industry as well. Next slide. So we are here to provide any information. Uh, you can follow us on our social media platforms that you see right uh, on the screen. But we also, you can reach us out either by email or visiting our website. We are very, very excited to be part of this partnership. And we hope that we can, you know, help you in any way we can down here in the Rio Grande Valley. Please let us know when you visit. And uh, thank you. Thank you for giving us this time to share our information. Thank you, Linda. So again, to all of our small businesses who are here, you've got lots of resources that we've brought you today um, from state procurement, um, resources that are available. Um, uh, you've got the MBDA group, you've got the um, uh, ECC group. Uh, all of us are available to help with capability statement, with business development plans. Uh, all kinds of resources. So please take advantage of those and contact uh, all of our entities. Um, DIR gave us all of their information as well. It's, it's a great group. Whichever group you look at, they're all great groups. So with that, let's go to our Q&A. Okay, thanks, okay. Maya. Yeah, we do have some questions uh, in the Q&A box. And I'll, I'll, I'll take the first one. Um, Aditi Joshi, president of... Um, Ibisu Supplies in Austin, uh, wanting to know a few things about how to register and receive opportunities from DIR. We kind of walked through that process about how to track where our solicitations are. Also, um, how to be considered for a DIR contract. We've included those links 
uh, on the DIR webpage as well. And then again, we encourage you to register with the CMDL because that's how businesses are notified of potential bid opportunities to do business with the state. Uh, speaking to the hub contact at DIR, um, if, if you have specific questions, you have my contact information, you've got contact information now uh, that was shown on the slide for both Lynn Hotty, uh, Desiree Brown, Teresa Williamson, and myself. So if you do, um, please reach out. We'd be more than glad to answer any questions for you. Uh, receive more business opportunities. Again, uh, both Maya and I spoke to the CMBL and making sure that you are registered with that. That's where you are notified with, for those opportunities. And how to become a subcontractor for TestMap. Text mass, as I'm not eligible as a prime yet. For the DIR text mass contracts, you can contact those prime contract holders to possibly discuss um, being included as a subcontractor on that prime contract holder's contract. DIR does not sign up subcontractors or resellers on, on our contracts. That relationship is held between the prime contract holder and any potential resellers or subcontractors. So I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, Maya, um, sorry, me, I, I, I could take that one. So <laughs> um, let me add, let me add to that a little bit. Um, the comptroller has a text mass division as well. So going to the comptroller's web page under purchasing that you hover over the purchasing tab and scroll down, you'll find a text mass link and you can contact them uh, for. Uh, they'll give you all the requirements on what's required to be a text mass vendor and, and tell you how that works. So that's where I recommend you go to CPA about our text mass program. Um, it's important that you um, that you network with hub coordinators with the different agencies, uh, with purchasers. Um, when they have um, hub forums, uh, visit with other vendors that are there. Some of the primes will attend. Um, making sure that you attend those pre-bid meetings if you want to be a subcontractor. Um, those solicitations when they require uh, pre-bid meetings, those primes attend those pre-bid meetings. So that's even though they're virtual right now, it's a great place to attend those. Make sure you sign in and request the hub coordinator or the purchaser give you the list of attendees at the pre-bid so that you can contact those pre-bids to see if they're primes that are interested in working with some subs. So developing those relationships, even when it's at a pre-bid meeting or at a hub forum, or going to contact the hub coordinators and let them know that you wanna do business with that agency, but you'd like to work with some of their primes first, that, that's another resource for you to use uh, to determine where, but networking is key. So all of these business events, small business events, where you can meet some of the vendors, uh, that's a good way too. We're going to have a listing of everybody who attended. And so, you know, maybe email some of them and let them know, maybe network, talk together. Uh, it could be that it's another sub, but it's networking and, and practicing with some of those other sub small business vendors and just making sure that you introduce yourselves. It's, it's practice for when you have to go and do that on a bigger scale. Okay, next question. Uh, do vendors have to be on the CMBL in order to win contracts? So the centralized master bidders list is a vendor list. Um, purchasers will search the, vend the CMBL to provide procurement notifications, but an award is based on a response. It is not based on uh, being on the CMBL. So no, you do not have to be on the CMBL, but if you're not on the CMBL, then you have to go find those opportunities. The CMBL just increases the availability uh, or the opportunity of you being notified of a potential procurement opportunity rather than you having to go search for it. Okay, next question. Do the ISDs have have hub coordinators? So some do. Um, they have different requirements for small supplier development diversity. Um, they have their own requirements. So um, uh, one example is the Austin Independent School District. I know that they have a hub coordinator and they use the statewide hub program. That's the only way I know that they're there. But some school districts have their own similar program. It's not exact to the hub program, but they 
they follow it in, in similar ways. They may establish their own rules. Um, the procurement requirements are different from the state's procurement requirements. So if there's a particular school district you wanna do business with, I suggest that you, you contact their procurement office and see if they have a small uh, business diversity group or if they have a hub group and, and contact them that way. Okay, next question. Where can we find state agencies and Texas University's purchasing officers' contact information? So I would start with the hub coordinator list because there's also purchasing uh, department contacts there. But remember the hub coordinator is your liaison. So if you're a hub, go to the hub coordinator. If you're not, you can contact the hub coordinator. They may send you to a procurement office and also sometimes on the website, uh, do the search on the website and find a directory. Um, they, a purchasing director would be listed on the agency or university's um, contact information. So uh, it may be that you have to do a little searching on their website to find it. Okay, uh, next question. I've been unable to get in contact with hub coordinators. So again, I would uh, try an email and a phone number. Um, content, getting into the agency website might be another way. Uh, agencies and universities are responsible for keeping their information updated on the Texas Smart Buy, which is the system the uh, comptroller uses for communication with the agencies and universities. Um, our hub coordinator list is based on, on that list that the comptroller has. So it changes regularly but I would start with the hub coordinator list that's on our website. And then I would also go to the agency or university's website and find the directory, uh, get a hold of a purchasing number, find out who you would go from there. Okay. Uh, question, can we, please can, you, can we please provide a checklist for hub and office inspection? A hub for office inspections. Uh, if you're talking about the compliance, uh, our list would be the hub requirements, which are listed on the historically underutilized business um, certification process. All of those requirements for um, gender and um, ethnic groups, as well as 51% minority and SBA. There's a link to the SBA uh, requirements. So there's not a particular list other than the list of requirements for certification. Uh, anything we add to that would be dependent on uh, the application that comes in if something was flagged uh, or if something's not complete in the supplemental documents that we need, that kind of thing. But I would use the uh, certification process requirements on the hub page. Okay, and then and this question is, is kind of directed at me from somebody wanting to talk about their IT security, uh, promote their cybersecurity portfolio. So the best advice I can give you is to keep an eye on the DIR website. And if you see a solicitation out there where you think your, your security products and services would be a fit, go ahead and check out that, that solicitation and view the documents to see if your products are within the scope of that RFO. Um, that's the best way to introduce your products and services to a, especially a, a, an agency like DIR who does do the IT procurements for the state. So that's the best advice I can give you is, is to just check the website. Again, make sure you're registered on the CMBL. So that, again, that opens doors for you to do business with the state and our eligible customers. Okay, uh, next question. What about Southwest's NMSB DC participants. Certified MBEs historically were not able to participate in procurements from Texas, even if from adjoining states under Southwest and NMSB DC charter. Has that changed? So there's a couple of things that I'm not sure which part of the question you're asking, but if you're asking about hub certification with the uh, with one of our memorandums of agreement, which is uh, different certification entities, their certification requirements in order for them to certify a business uh, under our, our requirements, that small business 
has to meet every single one of our requirements or they cannot give it or they cannot give that hub certification. Um, if you are a business out of state and you're being certified with the MBE, you will not be certified with the state of Texas because that does not meet our in-state requirement. The business has to be primarily based in Texas. It must be a Texas resident that has been a resident for at least one year. There's a US citizen requirement uh, other than the service disabled veteran. So all of those requirements for hub certification do not change. We still have those requirements. Uh, so if that's what you're talking about, then um, you can get certified with the MOA if you're meeting all of our requirements. You can submit an application directly for us. We will not give you a certification unless you meet all of our requirements. So if that's what you're asking, I hope I answered it. But you can still do business, whether you're a hub or non-hub, anyone can do business with the state of Texas. Okay, we had another question, uh, same thing. I've been able, unable to get in contact with hub coordinators. Could I get some assistance? And I think you provided some, some answers for that one, correct, Maya? Yes, and if there's still any problems, you can reach, um, reach me through the statewide hub program and I'll help you find what you need. Okay, when a bid is awarded uh, to an RFP, how can we find out who won the bid and the award amount? Can DIR hub contacts with that? So to, to answer your question, you once we we post our responses on the DIR website, when we receive solicitations, once an RFO has closed. So you can see who, who had responded to the RFOs. We also post the recently awarded contracts out on the DIR website. Again, we, we tend to make multiple contract awards under our RFOs, um, it but that depends on what the scope of that RFO is as well. But typically we make multiple vendor awards, particularly for our cooperative contracts. So you can see on the DIR webpage uh, who was recently awarded contracts under DIR. That is, uh, that is public information. And if that doesn't answer your question, I also encourage you to uh, do an open records request and uh, you can you can request that information that way as well. Okay, I see that I have missed some of the pre bid meetings. What are your recommendations for those instances. So, if it is a required pre bid meeting, um, I would contact the purchaser listed on the solicitation by email. Uh, do not pick up a phone and call them because you want to make sure that whatever question you have, you're not being disqualified in the participation. While a solicitation is open, you have to be careful how you communicate. And sometimes it's only with a purchasing director. And if you communicate with a hub director or hub coordinator, they have to be careful also. So uh, there's those requirements there. Um, if you miss the pre-bid, email the purchaser to find out if there's anything they can share with you. Um, generally, they're going to say if you missed the pre bid and we don't have another one coming, uh, some of that only the information that is that they can release publicly they will share with you. Um, so the contact the procurement person, procure, purchasing person listed on that solicitation would be the best person to start with by email. Okay, next question Will we be notified when our CMBL certification is expiring? So um, you would have to make sure that your business email is listed correctly on your profile of the CMBL or the hub directory. Uh, the hub directory does start sending emails four months before the expiration of that certification, but we send it to the email that's listed on the profile as an, an official communication for us. That's also important for you to keep updated because remember, that's how purchasers are going to contact the vendors uh, for possible solicitations. So um, CMBL, I believe, also sends you a notice. I don't know if it's three or four months before, uh, but they do do that. And remember, it is an annual. So if um, you go to your profile listing on the CMBL, an expiration date will be found on that. So you can keep up with it that way. Okay. Uh, can you tell us once more how to find the hub coordinator list? 
Yes, so on the comptroller, C-O-M-P-T-R-O-L-L-E-R dot Texas, T-E-X-A-S dot G-O-V. That's the comptroller's webpage. And on the black bar right under, or at the very top of the page will be different categories. If you go to purchasing, uh, hover over the purchasing tab and under the vendor resources that pop up, you will go down three in the very middle. Uh, three is for the historically underutilized business page. So if you click on the historically underutilized business page, it'll take you to our homepage. And on the right-hand side are related links. And the hub and business resources is the it's link you want to get that will take you to the business resources page. And then about a third or halfway down, you will see a green or blue link. I can't remember what color it is uh, on the left-hand side. And it just says hub coordinator list. And if you click on that, an Excel sheet will uh, pop up. You can open it and you do a fine search for either an agency name or a hub coordinator name, that's one way. Or you can go to the agency or university hub page and find the contact information there. And if you still need assistance, just send me an email and we'll visit. Okay, and Orios, it looks like you have gotten your question answered. Actually, that's exactly what Maya was just uh, asking or, or describing as to where to find that coordinators list on the website. So glad that's answered. Uh, next question, is a state of Texas certified hub an approved hub to use when a city of Austin hub procurement comes out? So city would fall under the municipality, municipality purchasing requirements. Um, we do have a memorandum of agreement with the city of Austin, so their certification requirements are very similar, if not exact like ours. I, I'm not, I, I want to say they're exact like ours, but I'm not for sure. They're very close. Um, but nonetheless, if they're certifying for us, they can only certify a vendor that's based on our requirements. Um, so you need to contact them for that kind of a question, because I don't know what their purchasing requirements are. Um, so I'm sorry, but you can find a link to their um, supplier diversity program on the hub page through the memorandum of agreement link. Okay, it looks like that sums up all of the questions that we had in the Q&A panel. Great, so I'd like to thank everybody for being with us today. Um, again, there's contact information for every one of us that was here. I'd like to thank our special guests, the uh, Minority Business Development Agency, uh, Jose Munoz and Linda Ufland from the um, ECC. So thank you very much. Uh, don't hesitate to contact them. They're a great resource to help you in a lot of different ways. And so we will make this- Thank you very much. We will make this presentation available to the attendees. So yes, expect a copy of it. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here today. Goodbye.